So in the TCG, you get to start with five cards. You got a 40 card minimum deck, and you have 8,000 life points. Therefore, some of these cards that we're going to be talking about today may not be as big of a deal in the TCG format as they are in the in Duel Links. Thus, kind of needing to be, you know, either semi-limited, limited. limited or, of course, outright banned. And the cards we're going to be talking about today are going to be in no particular order of, like, severity of needing to be hit. We're just going to be talking about them collectively in a randomized order as we go through them using the Ranked Duels Pipler card rankings. Um, so this ranking system only shows the last 24 hours, but it's pretty accurate in terms of what cards are being used for the most part, uh, at least back row-wise, because it seems like a lot of decks are running... More or less the same exact back rows because those cards are just so powerful. And the cards we're going to be talking about are all going to be considered and classified under the game-changing category that I'm just making up for you guys today. And, you know, you don't have to agree with my list. You don't have to agree with my reasonings because this is all just my personal opinion. But I definitely want to share it with all of you and get your perspective. You can let me know in the comment section below. And make sure you guys also subscribe and like the video if you did. Um, so, anyways... When we're talking about a game-changing card, we're talking about a card that can just come in and create a game-winning situation or completely turn the game around for you or even cause your opponent to just go in with a lot of resources and just completely be left with nothing because of one or two cards. And these cards, granted, they you only get to start with four cards in your hand, unlike the TCG with five, especially if you go first, but... You are in a much smaller deck build, which is like minimum 20 cards compared to minimum 40. So you're drawing into these game-changing cards. And when you're running multiple game-changing cards together, like, for example, a Wall of D, Canadia, and Floodgate, you know, any of those two or all three in the same deck, you have a lot of powerful back row that can be completely, you know, win-con win -con cards and you're all and you're getting them drawn in together pretty quickly. You're top decking them a lot more consistently since you're running a smaller deck. You're drawing um, into them in your first hand, so you might have multiple copies starting the game with them. And it's just it becomes a big issue. And that's just an example of traps. There's also spell cards and monsters that also fall under that category of being just absolute game changers. And I feel running a one or two uh, game changes in a deck is fine. But when you're running half of your deck with cards like that or a card that you can run at a, th a full three of and you're going to draw into it quickly, it just becomes an issue in, in the game. And I understand a lot of people are going to complain that a lot of these cards are from boxes, either mini or main. And people's like, I spent money. But please understand this. This is a gotcha game. A lot of people keep forgetting that Duel Links is a gotcha game. And when you start going in with real money, you're never going to get that investment back. So please don't throw that excuse around because it's just stupid. Okay, guys? This is a gotcha game through and through down to its very core. You just need to accept that fact. If you don't want to spend money on a gotcha game, then I recommend that you don't do it. Because you will never, and I repeat, never, ever get that investment back you never will it just does not happen these are digital cards these are just you know flat jpegs that you're spending real cash on so keep that in mind guys and another reason these cards need to be hit that way the balance of the game kind of stays intact allowing for new players to come and enjoy the game because here's what's going to happen if you spend a bunch of money on the game and there's no player base, then the game dies. Thus, all the money you invested goes to nothing anyway. Would you rather spend money and still be able to enjoy the game and its longevity by losing a few copies of your cards? Or would you rather the player base just completely die because of the toxicity of the actual current meta and it's forcing new players and even older veteran players or the majority of the casuals and free-to-plays to just leave the game, thus having no player base and the game die anyway. So think about that, guys, when we go into these lists. So anyways, let's get started. We've rambled on enough. So the first card we're going to talk about, which is already up here, is Paleozoic Canadia. What can this card do? This card shuts down so much combos. It shuts down a lot of things. It forces your opponent's monster into face down defense position, which allows you to somehow sometimes run over that monster, especially if it has weaker defense. Or if it has really good effects, you shut it down for that turn, allowing you to build up your own turn to forcibly get around that monster and deal with it in any way you think you can to keep it from either activating its effect, crashing into you, or, or doing any sort of, you know, a variety of other things that could, you know, pull victory in their favor. 
So, Canadia, Canadia is definitely one of the main problems right now with us not being able to really utilize synchros to their maximum. Now, granted, synchros don't have very good general synchros in the game yet. We don't have very good tuners, but the fact that we can't really enjoy the new big release, which was 5Ds with synchros, is kind of hurting Konami's game big time because it was supposed to be the big new hype thing of the year. Well, going into the next year, rather. And it's not been. It's been a complete and utter flop. Besides Dragon Unity recently being able to utilize Synchros, but still, you know, getting hit hard with Canadia or Floodgate, um, and maybe even Blue Eyes utilizing Azure Eyes and Stardust, there really isn't no other Synchros that are even being able to be even remotely usable in really the current meta. And that's unfortunate because Synchros are supposed to be hype in the new thing, but this card alone and alongside Floodgate have kept Synchros in check. Um, another card we'll be talking about that needs to be banned, by the way, was also another reason why Synchros are just being absolutely in check. Canadia hitting a Fusion, and you guys know that uh, Konami's been trying to push Fusion for so long. Konami, you need to play your own game. Fusion's never going to be a big thing um, unless you just keep releasing Fusions that work kind of like Anki, where they can just come out with one card and just be OP. If you're not going to do that, which that would be cancerous, by the way, because, <laughs> spoiler alert, Anki and Mass Change will be talked about in today's video, then fusions are never really going to make it with cards like Canadia and Floodgate, and even if we ever get cards like that in the future, like just plain old Trap Hole or Bottomless Trap Hole, all those cards are just too, too cancerous, and they need to be restricted. They don't need to be completely outright just removed, but they definitely need to be restricted to match up with the 20 cards that we're playing in the game. Not only are we only playing with 20 cards over 40, we're playing with a smaller zone. So players, even if you have the resources, you can't always use all the resources you need um, because there's just no room for it, especially in the back row. So yeah, a card like Canadia definitely needs to be hit. Another card we're going to be talking about here is Wall of D. Oh, by the way, I I'll tell you what type of hit it needs. It just needs to be semi-limited. So you can only run two of it. And um, for the same reasons, just to save time on the video, the same reasons that I just mentioned Canadia, um, I'm also going to mention Floodgate. Floodgate is the other car that needs to be semi-limited for basically the same reasons as Canadia, except Floodgate is more permanent. He puts your butt face down, and you stay face down. So, yes, Floodgate and Canadia... Both need to be semi-limited for basically the same reason. It just shuts down way too many things for just a solo card. But Canadia is more versatile because Canadia can actually come back from the grave and be utilized as a monster or even a single tribute for a tribute deck like UAs, for example, or even vampires. So, yes, definitely Canadia needs to be hit. Um, and Floodgate as well for basically the more or less the same thing. All right, so now we have Wall of D. I don't think I need to explain too much about why Wall of D needs to be semi-limited as well. I mean, it's literally shutting down a full board and with a lot of decks nowadays having to run a swarming deck just to survive because of a card that we're going to be talking about later. You, you, you really have to kind of just hit this card. You have to because... It just shuts down so many things. This is probably one of the more easier traps to play around because people will just wait to see if it's chainable when you summon a monster. Um, and they'll know if it's not chainable, then it's probably a wall of D. Um, so it's it's definitely a card you could play around more or less. But even, even sometimes when you know that it's there, sometimes you have to attack. You have to make the gamble to attack and hope that it's something else. Because if you just leave yourself wide open for another turn, you may lose. So sometimes Wall D, even know that, even knowing that it's back there, sometimes you have to gamble, and unfortunately Wall of D is just so powerful. Wall of D also forces you to sometimes put monsters in defense position because you don't want to attack, because then you risk just zeroing out everything, and that effect lasts permanently. So a very disruptive card, very very powerful, and it always has been. I've seen countless people. Always talking about it needs to be semi-limited. And yes, indeed, it does need to be hit that too. Because this card is also being ran with other big game-changing cards like Floodgate and Canadia. And again, all these cards are so powerful 
that they shouldn't be really ran with the other powerful cards and a 20 card deck so konami you need to start learning some information here about your own game doing some more analytical research and maybe it's time it's almost 2019 i think it's time konami we bump the minimum cards from 20 to 30 because all these game changing cards being thrown into a 20 card deck it's too much all right so we've talked about that. They already hit enemy controller, so we don't got to talk about that no more. All right. Treacherous Trap Hole, a.k.a. Treacherous Trap Hell. We need to just literally outright ban this card. If there's one card that warrants hitting the ban list for the first time ever in Duel Links, yes, Konami, let's actually make use of the ban list feature that is got nothing in it. This is definitely the card that I would submit to be placed in the freaking ban list because this card is one of the most disruptive piece of shit cards in this entire game this card requires zero skill zero attention to detail zero strategy this card is literally in its own right just a complete game win con it's ridiculous if you get this card off you're clearing 66 percent of your opponent's monster zones instantly just like that bam and it is chainable so even a card like true nade can't really play around it if you have the required amount of monsters on the field for this bad boy to go off it's just absolutely disgusting this card wins so many games it's ridiculous and limiting it or even semi-limiting it is completely worthless because you're only going to run mostly one of this in the first place this card was so cancerous that even with its big restriction, people would still run three of it just because it was worth drawing into early game because it was that big of a win con. This card could win you games by itself. Absolutely disgusting, and I think a lot of us are tired of seeing it. I think it's time for a card to finally hit the ban list, and no card would be more perfect or more suited than Treacherous Trap Hole. So that card needs to get the fuck out. So please make that happen. All right. So we've already talked about Floodgate. We've already talked about Treacherous. We've already talked about Canadia and Wall of D. Let's move on to the monsters real quick. So we have Mask Hero Anki with Mask Change. So what's, what's interesting about this list here is Mask Change is at 9 and... Mask change. I'm sorry. Mask changes at 12 and Anki is at nine, which those statistics just don't really add up for me, which is very odd because it takes a mass change to make an Anki, so it would theoretically always be used the same amount of times. If not, mass change would be used more often because sometimes you can negate it. So I'm a little bit confused how that's nine and that's 12, but whatever. Anyways. Those two cards, I'm, I'm doing this for both of them collectively. You can decide which one you want to hit. But one of these cards definitely needs hit. Mass Change bringing out a Mass Hero Anki with 2,800 attack just instantly. Basically being able to use any monster in the entire D-Hero deck. Because they all fall under the, 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 um, the requirement for Mass Hero and Mass Change to actually be activated. It is ridiculous. 2800 attack monster that not only when he destroys a monster he can bring himself back out by searching another mass change from your deck and then re-summon again on top of himself he can also attack directly and with cards like forbidden chalice you can actually go in for over 3k right over your opponent in a 4k meta 4k format i'm sorry and that is way too much and i think a lot of us are just tired of seeing mask heroes hanging around in the meta they've been in the meta for several months now i think it's time that the deck just goes and takes a nice little slumber for a long time because i for one am sick and tired of seeing people just popping mass change and it's a quick play by the way and then boom another 28 beat stick anki and then you and then they attack and you somehow finally deal with that one and then boom they do it right again and you're like this is absolutely ridiculous it is beyond stupid and it was even more broken back when true nade was at full power and people are still making good use of it because of cards like galaxy cyclone and cosmic cyclone being able to handle it with your back row so you can just run over players it's absolutely disgusting and since mass change is a quick play you can even pluck at your opponent's back row with your monsters first to kind of get an idea of what's going on 
to get out of certain bad situations, and then boom, you bring out Anki, and then you just go in for game, and it's absolutely ridiculous. Those two cards, one of them needs to get hit, or both of them, I don't know. I feel like if you're going to hit hit one or the other, though, it has to be a semi-limit. That way, you're absolutely just getting Celestial out of the D-Hero deck. I don't care if you put Vion back to three to actually make use of the other fusions. That's fine. Those were not the issue. Anki, Mass Change, that's ridiculous. And Mass Change also has Mass Charge, so you could theoretically still somewhat play with that. Um, to its full power if they do hit mass change but if Anki could get hit that would be great too but it is a UR in a main box set so we'll see but uh, mass change is an SR so it's more likely I think to be hit but one of them definitely needs hit the only issue I have with hitting Anki and not mass change is if mass change gets more mass hero targets in the future some of which are way better than Anki so in my opinion I'd rather they just hit mass change all right anyways <laughs> Moving along, um, another card here. What do we have now? Let's see what I think I've won over most of them. Oh yeah, Spellbook of Fate. Spellbook of Fate. Where are you? I know you're on this list somewhere. There you are. Spellbook of Fate. I don't even think I need to tell you why this card needs to be somewhat limited. It's fucking stupid. It doesn't target, so you don't even know what to chain to it to try and avoid certain situations. And it can be re it can be reused multiple times. I've had people play this four or five times in one duel because it has so many other spellbook cards like Eternity that can keep re bringing it back and recycling it and reusing it. It's too broken. It was broken back when spellbooks first came out, and then it got even more broken when Silent Magician came out, and now it's being utilized yet again with Blue Eyes. It's it's just disgusting. The card just needs to go. Um, I would like this card to be banned personally. I just hate it that much, but I know that's asking for way too much And that's a little bit too harsh on the deck, but it definitely needs to be semi-limited to two for sure um, Running two of this will not kill this bubble deck at all But it definitely limits the resources a little bit on how much I can just sit there and spam such a broken ass card Because it banishes anything that it hits and banishing in this game is so severe right now absolutely severe Especially when we have a lot of decks that recover from the graveyard, but if you banish it, you're screwed. This definitely needs to be semi-limited, no doubt about it. Alright, so I think that's all for the spells. I didn't really see anything else spell-wise that really, really stands out that needs to be hit or anything like that. That seems to be, you know, too broken, at least right now. I think maybe in the future when we get better cards, the grass looks greener might need to be hit. Um, but you know, we're not at that, that point yet. So not really anything to, uh, sniff it at the moment, to be honest. All right. So we've went over the spell that needs to be hit. And, and like I said, cosmic cyclone and galaxy, they're both disgusting. They're both very powerful. And I would love to see cyclone hit at least or galaxy. They're both extremely OP, but they are very both. They are still very limited. And cyclone does have a, a hefty thousand life point cost and galaxy, um, is not a quick place so you have to use it on your turn or you can't use it at all so there is a little bit of restrictions on those two cards that kind of you know self-inflicted restrictions that kind of keep it out of being absolutely broken so we don't got to really talk about those either um, monster wise we did have a few more monsters I wanted to talk about uh, right here samurai skull samurai skull needs to be the nerf to vampires vampires are still extremely powerful they're not absolutely broken to like the extent of like D heroes or or what fur hires used to be or what sylvans used to be um or even what cyber angels used to be but it is still a very powerful card it can replace itself with another monster from your deck easily by being basically removed from the field either by being destroyed by a card effect going to the graveyard or being banished or anything like that the only way you can really get rid of samurai skull is just destroyed by battle otherwise it's going to really replace itself um so it's very, very powerful, and it allows you to mill instantly. So it instantly allows you, unlike Gazuki, which you have to activate the effect, which could be negated. Samurai Skull just summons to the field, and it instantly activates its effect on summon. So you can't really stop it, more or less, for the most part, um, outside of, I think, like maybe like a Providence, or, for example. But And that kind of really fuels the whole Vampire deck. So being able to run three of that, and it being only a rare, it's very accessible to a majority of the player base. It could probably use a semi-limit, to be honest, um, but it's definitely one of the the more less broken cards that we've talked about today. Now, 
for our final card. I know there's more cards that we could talk about that I might have missed, but I just wanted to get through a few of them here today. Our final one that we're going to talk about here today is Amazon a Swordswoman. Yes, Amazons have been nerfed three times now. That's fine. Amazonas itself may not be a strong deck, even though I got KOG with it post-nerfs last season and up to Legend 3 this season. Um, if I would have kept at it, I probably would have got King Games this season with Amazonas again. But I feel that Amazonas Swordswoman does not need to be in an Amazon deck because she is a pure burn card. She can burn you in so many varieties, especially if you pair her up with Cypher Soldier and DNA. Um, with Spike Shield, you also got her in the Burn deck with old school with uh, one copy of Massimorph in Lava Golem. Um, you could even run her with Weevil for Parasite Infestation Burn. She's just absolutely disgusting in a 4,000 life point format, and her only being a 1,500 attack monster, and her being able to just. A crash into anything without no fear because you're always going to deal your opponent the damage. That is very disgusting and very overpowered. And I feel that Amazon Swordswoman also could use a semi limit. Notice that none of today's cards really need limited. Um, and of course, Treacherous needed banned. So most of today's video was about semi limits. Didn't really see anything that needed limited. Um, you know, I, yeah, I just don't feel none of the cards we talked about today really need a hard one limit. Um, if we ever get some really crazy broken cards in the future again, perhaps. But for now, those cards that I mentioned on today's list need to be semi-limited and Treacherous just needs to be outright freaking banned. So if you guys agree, let me know in the comment section below if you have any changes or if you have different opinions but still agree. Any of that good stuff, keep the conversation going after the video by going to the comment section below or also joining us in the Discord in the description below as always. And again, make sure you subscribe become an Impact Player today. We're almost at 10K on our way to 10K. That's what I should have said. And also... If you guys have any ideas for some future videos, because it's kind of a dry spell right now for Dueling's content, let me know in the Discord or description below as always, and I'll see what we can do. Well, I mean, talk to you guys later. Hope you guys all have a great rest of your weekend. Until next time, happy dueling and peace.